came from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth unto Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her first maid son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the end. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. do you have room do you have for Jesus? For Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Do you have room for Jesus? Our message this morning will be short. We think about Christmas, and as Brother Harold so graciously said, the birth of Jesus was not on December 25th. December the 25th was more of a winter solace worship of paganism. It was celebrating the winter, getting ready to turn into the spring. It was a day that was already in the pagan Roman culture. Most likely, Jesus was brought born anywhere, could have been from March all the way through September, the time of the lambs, because the lambs were greatly sacrificed during September. Shepherds would not have been in their fields watching the flock by night if it was in December because the Middle East is very cold. But to the point now that Mary and Joseph were traveling and they came at the time of the taxation, they could not find room in the end. They could not find a place that they could stay. They couldn't find Hotel Motel 6. They couldn't find Fairfield. They couldn't find Holiday Inn. They found no room that she might have a child. So the Bible says that she had a child, most likely in the cave where the animals were. Not a barn, not a neat facility, as we see laid out on TV. Most likely it was a cold, damp, wet cave where the animals were sheltered. And she laid him in a manger because there was no room in the end. I say to you this morning that there is still no room for Jesus in the ends of men's heart. People want Christmas, but they want it without Christ. People want to worship Christmas, but they want it without a Christ. They want a manger without the man. Amen. Do you have room for Jesus? We are busy celebrating Christmas that we have forgotten about the Christ of Christmas. We have been so busy that people will actually say, I can't wait till Christmas is over. Because I'm running around with my head cut off. Because they're celebrating the wrong reason. Amen, amen. Jesus is still the reason for the season. Yes. Do you have room for Jesus? Yes. There was no room in Bethlehem. For him who left his throne yes. to seek the lost at countless costs and make their grief his own. But there was room on Calvary upon the cross of shame for him to die lifted high to bear the sinner's blame. There's no room in Bethlehem and in the world today. Men would not give him room to live but bid him to turn away. But there is room at Calvary, and there he stands to give. A home to all who heed the call and look to him to live. There is no room in Bethlehem for Christ the Prince of Kings. 
From thrones and crowns to earth come down with healing in his wings. But there is room at Calvary for sinners to abide. And who will come may find a home in Jesus crucified. Do I have to question or even have to ask you twice? Do you have room, room for Jesus Christ? Amen. Have you made room for Jesus? When our relatives come to stay in our houses, how do we make room? All right. When folks need to stay or folks need to come in that we are kin to, we'll make room. All right. When we don't have time for this, but when that comes along, we'll take the time. Do you have room for Jesus? Oh, God. People are so busy celebrating Christmas, they have forgotten the Christ. There is no Christmas without a cradle. Mm. Yeah. There's no use for a cradle without a cross. Mm. There is no crown without a cross. Do you have room for Jesus? Oh, I don't want to know. Do you go to church? Well, well. I don't want to know if you clap your hands. For Jesus. Oh, Folks call and ask when Christmas falls on Sunday, are we having church? Wow, wow. Yes. We have a church on Sunday because it's all about Him. Yes. Take time and make time and oh, give God. room for Jesus in your life. Yes. Right. Sometimes we are so busy being busy that we don't have room enough to receive Jesus. Yeah. Jesus can stand and knock at the door. And we're too busy to let him in. Yeah. Jesus stands and he knocks at your heart. But we dare not let him in. We don't mind him, Brother Nairi, when he's a baby. Because babies are soft and cuddly and cute. We don't mind them as a baby because they smell so perfumey. Like Johnson baby perfume. Oh, but we don't need him as a man because he talks about our sins. We want him as a baby, but we reject him as the man. Do you have room for Jesus? You see, he was born only to die. Yes. Those little baby body that he had so soft and cute was grown to be a man so he could die. Yes. Those little baby hands and little smelly baby feet were only there that they could drive the nails in his hand when he became a man. And those legs only grew strong so it could carry him. To Golgotha's hill. What good is Christmas without a Christ? Amen. That's why he came. Do you have room for Jesus? We say we got room, but we don't take the time to invite him in. We say we got room, but we don't have time to have the conversations we need with him. We say we got room, but we don't know much about him because we don't read the manual that he left. Yes. Do you have room for Jesus? Oh, God. Why is Christmas only celebrated one day out of the year when every day is Christmas? Yes. Man. Yes. Oh, every day. Wouldn't it be so beautiful if every time we got up, we said, praise the Lord, Merry Christmas. We smiled and we gave gifts to one another. Oh, we learned about mercy. We learned about love. We learned about forgiveness. And we celebrate every day as Christmas. 
The greatest gift that God gave to you is you. Amen. Your greatest gift that you can give to God is what you make of you. Do you have room for Jesus? Do you have room? Are you allowing him to occupy every area of your life? Do you have room for Jesus? There was a thing on TV where folks got in the car now, where they were seeing how many people can get in. Like the Bible talks about. Did you know that 120 people can fit in one accord? On the day of Pentecost, there was 120 in the upper room and they were all in one accord. <laughs> I'm taking another time. <laughs> Do you have room? Have y'all ever needed a ride your friend and they talk about, well, got no room. Squeeze in, squeeze in. You be on a bench at a game or something. Squeeze in. Come on, make it tighter, make it tighter. Do you have room for Jesus? <clears throat> Jesus is still the reason yes. for the season. Yes. We will go out and spend many thousands and thousands of dollars and be broke paying bills. To give gifts that the kids tear up the next day. Amen. 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 I had an incident when my daughter was talking on the phone and said some words she shouldn't have said. And I took that cell phone and me and the wall had a conversation. And then I got to thinking, my wife said, what phone was it? Because we bought her a new phone to give her for Christmas. And I was saying, oh, Lord, please don't let that be the phone. I just threw it this <laughs> And I ran downstairs and looked for the box. <laughs> Y'all know how it is. You give them new clothes, new car, new bikes and stuff, and before you know it, the chains off is rusting still out in the rain. But the gift that Jesus gave never gets old. Amen. Yes. Yes. He gave a gift that lasts through eternity. Are you making room for Jesus? We're not having a long service today, but long enough to find out, are you making room for Jesus in your life? We make room for everything else but God. Well, you know, I, I can't make it today, Pastor. I got to go work overtime and overtime and double time and triple time. But how about some time for the one who gave you the ability to go work double time, right. triple time, Amen. and overtime? Amen. Well, God knows my heart. Yeah, that's why you're not here. Amen. <laughs> Are you making room for Jesus? All right. Well, I got to go out of town. It's the holiday. It's not a holiday. It's a holy day. Amen. And we ought to make room for Jesus. Because if you don't make room for him here, He's not going to make room for you up there. Oh, man. There was a time up on earth when God and mercy walked hand in hand. They came to the crippled and lame, and mercy saw it. Lord, allowed them to stand. They came to the blind, whose eyes were forever closed, and mercy said, Lord, restore to him that joy. They came to the widow woman who just lost her boy, and mercy cried, Lord, restore unto her that joy. They went into the garden so they could pray. They prayed so hard that mercy wiped great drops of sweat away. Then came Judas and gave the master a betrayal kiss. And mercy whispered, sometimes my friends will do you like this. The master said, whom do you seek? They said, Jesus of Nazareth. And then they fell at his feet. Do you have room? Sorry, Brother Harold, I cut it off. Ah! Brother Harold wanted me to take that, but... Ah. I just threw that in to make him jealous of it. Do you have room? Yeah. Do you have room? Do you have room? We want to celebrate Christmas, but we don't want the Christ. It's like asking for a baby and no pain. It's like the wife says, you get a check, and you say, I'm an overcomer. Your wife snatches a check, I'm more than an overcomer. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean I, we had to go work oh she's a manager too um, I came, came, they both managed the store I came to that 
<laughs> you know I ain't say nothing this way. <laughs> I'm trying to make room. <laughs> we got to have Christ in our life. Amen. We need him. Don't let Jesus be a part-time thing. Let him be a full-time in your life. We need Jesus. You can't make it without him, y'all. He's better than all state. Because he's in you get you're in good hands with Jesus. Amen. But you got to make room. Yes. You got to make room. Yes. And see, that's why I was mentioned earlier about potato salad and enchiladas. Have you ever been eating at the table and you're full, but then some sweets come out? Why is it that you always have room? <laughs> I'm lying, I'm dying. Why is it you be full, full, and then somebody bring out an apple pie, deep dish, a pizza, a pe pecan pie, whoever eats those things, and stuff like that, and you always got, well, I got room just for a little bit more. <laughs> but you got room for nothing else. <laughs> and isn't that funny? It's like you tell somebody, I got things to do, and then somebody say, hey, you want to go shopping with me? Oh, yeah, come on. <laughs> I got room for that. You know? You say, well, well I, I would, Pastor, I would come to church, but I got to cut the grass, I got to do this, I got to go shoot this, I got to go peel the cow, I got to do this. Hey, you want to go to the basketball game? Hey, I got room. We make room for those things that we want to have room. Take time for Jesus. Take time. We want to wish you a Merry Christmas and a happy New Year's. We want to thank God for one of our oldest members. Amen. I don't know. You could have somebody older than you. How old are you, Eugene? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think we're the oldest. Okay. We want to thank y'all for being with us this year and going through. We want to thank God for all the people We've been up and we've been down, almost level to the ground, but we're still here. Amen. Amen. The storm, the only damage we got to the hurricane was those little lines on the top of the ceiling, but we're still here. I mean, all the years we, we, we've been, we were here in Ivory when that building was this, was this way. Remember the baptism tub, that wall on the side? Remember that big old kitchen we had in the back where we ate at? In that little bitty room? We've come a long way. Yes, thank you. But it's because we took time to make room. For Jesus. And I believe if we continue to take time to make room for him, he's going to take time to make room for us. That's why he'll say, well done, that good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over little. I'm going to make room for much for you. So we want to just thank everybody for being here. We want you to have a very Merry Christmas. We ask that you would give the offering as you go out. We ask you that you would still give. Yeah. And we appreciate anything you give. We owe twenty thousand dollars left to this church. We only have two years to pay it. Let's do this, y'all. Let's Amen. figure out a way. They're going to put the new roof on. They were over there last month looking at it. They're going to get to work. But Naira and I was talking. Naira said, unless you looked up, you would never know there was damage in the building, especially way uh, James. And Eva cleaned that building, boy. Now, you've been in there. They, they went in there and went to town cleaning that building. Amen. I mean, to doing the dishes, doing the floor. It was like, wow, yeah. And they called saying they couldn't be here because he had to work again. But it's just good that we're still here. We're hanging on. Amen. We just want to make it, y'all. We're trying to get home. We're trying to go home. Let's get there together. Let's get there together. We just want to thank God for being God Amen. and for loving Amen. us just as he is. Thank God for all of our friends. Thank God for all of our families. Yeah. Thank God for our enemies. Man. Because if it wasn't for them pushing on us, we wouldn't get closer to God. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it just it takes trials, it takes tribulations, it takes heartache, and it takes pain. But when it's all said and done, it's all designed to push us towards Jesus. Yeah. So take time to make time for Jesus. Amen. Man. Man. We ask that you stand for <clears throat> offering. As we dismiss, <clears throat> I told Nyree, he's gone from Brother Nyree to Deacon Nyree to Preacher Nyree. I'm going to get him one of these days, y'all. I'm going 
going to get him. I'm going to make sure he makes room. Okay. If it had not been for Jesus. We want to thank God for our friends. Joe, who always come here. Joe told me he goes to Our Lady of Sorrows and he said, Brother Green, I'm Catholic and I'm going to be Catholic. And so now at work, he's Pentecostal and I'm Catholic. <laughs> and I'll be laughing about it. Me and he'll be messing with each other. He said, you know how us Pentecostals are? I said, yeah, you know how us Catholics are. Yeah. You know. But he has been here to back up his wife, to give wife his support. Amen. He's been here to play music for us. Amen. And never ask anything. And there's been time when his wife is not even here because she's out of town, that he comes by and he said, I just want to drop off an offering for you. I just wanted to give y'all something. Amen. So thank God for them and their family. We pray that God give them the strength to be the men and women of God in their family. That he would give them strength. Amen. Strength in their lives they can be the best of what they need to be so that people can see the Christ in them. Amen. Now, Father, as we depart from this place, let us not depart from your presence. And whatever we give, God, whether it's big or small, let it go for your glory, your honor, and your praise. We thank you, Lord, for the angel eyes. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs>